Okay, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to Desktop Publishing, uh, part one. And uh, my name is uh, Tom Stranat. I'm the uh, lead digital uh, artist of the uh, the uh, creator space. Um, just want to welcome everyone to today's uh, workshop. So this is part one, and uh, we'll be talking about um, uh, the theories and concepts of uh, design and layout for uh, desktop publishing. And the cool thing is uh, we will have... Uh, um, a discussion. Uh, Jeff Wilson will be uh, leading us on this uh, this journey through uh, publishing, and uh, at the same time, uh, we'll be creating some uh, intro and like tutorial videos that express and explore how these concepts can be added uh, into and, and how they can be used with uh, the Affinity Publisher software. So the software we're using is a uh, is a low cost uh, software, um, and uh, it's. Um, available at the Creator Space uh, Digital Arts uh, Computer uh, Labs uh, in, the, in the computer stations. And so you can access it that way. And it's also, uh, I, think, I think right now currently it's $70 Canadian um, to purchase outright. Uh, so it's, it's a really low cost uh, solution. So um, yeah, that's the software we're featuring. But I think the, the essence of the desktop publishing is such a fascinating field and we wanted to, uh, to explore this and, and, uh, and take you guys through what it takes to put together, um, you know, put together a book and, and uh, publish. So um, let's look at a few, uh, I'll just introduce a few uh, concepts here and, and some information. Um, so on the journey, as I mentioned, uh, we have Jeff Wilson, who is an illustrator and animator. And uh, he's also designed and published several books, uh, including some, uh, some of his uh, comics uh, as anthologies. And they're available on uh, Amazon as well. Uh, I've read and, and uh, got some of these. They're quite fantastic. So uh, definitely check those out if you want to see uh, his, uh, his work. And um, yeah, so we're really happy to have uh, uh, you know, a, a local artist that uh, has this experience and can bring this to the table and, and to present that to us uh, uh, today. So in terms of the software, I mentioned, uh, so it's the Affinity Publisher software. It's a low-cost app. And it's available uh, on Windows and Mac OS systems. It offers a one-time purchase fee, and it's similar to Adobe's InDesign. So a lot of the ideas that we'll talk about in the software side and show through some videos uh, will be applicable to InDesign. So if you already have the Adobe Creative Suite, you're you know welcome to uh, use that as well. Um, so we're just trying to offer something that is a uh, you know a little more affordable. And at the same time, there will be other software out there. So it's just like InDesign. There's a, a few other publishing softwares out there, but we wanted to find something that was, um, again, affordable and could work. And the, and the other thing is that we will have these, uh, this software, all the Affinity Publisher. There's also Photo uh, and Designer, which is Photoshop and Illustrator. So those same similar softwares, the three, that Affinity Suite will be available in all our computers the digital arts iMac computer. So that's at the Blue Mountains Public Library. Uh, we're just about to install one in the Wasaga Beach Public Library. And then coming in March, we will have uh, computers in the Collingwood Public Library as well. So really great. You can book time, uh, different time variations. And uh, so, you know, you can go to our website, tbmcs.ca, and to learn more about the booking time and uh, what's required. Um, so today, uh, the part one is uh, design and layout. And what, what's going to happen is in each session, we'll explore desktop publishing, design theory, concepts, and techniques. And then we will have a complimentary video that we'll post the next week um, that explores the concepts that were talked about uh, by Jeff. And using Publisher, we'll demo how those concepts can be applied. And we'll go over some of the, uh, the ideas in terms of, like for example, today, design and layout, what does that mean and how do we set things up in the software? So that's the real fun part is that we'll be having a whole theory class, essentially, you know, with the concepts and, and design elements. And then we'll have uh, some complementary and uh, supplementary videos and links to some of the affinity uh, tutorials as well. So there's tons of stuff on, on how the software works. And uh, we'll have that all available as we go. So it's a, it's a journey we'll be taking together. So I'm really excited um, about that. So I'm going to just uh, do a little bit of an intro on what the software 
uh, looks like and you know we can uh, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Jaffa as he goes from there so let me just switch over to um, to another computer here so this is the affinity um, uh, site and here we have the uh, publisher so if you go to affinity.serif.com uh, you can uh, find that I'll, I'll put that into our comments here as well so you can go directly to it and there's a whole uh, overview of what it uh, what it looks like and some of the features that, that can uh, be used in it. And again, it's, you know, identical, really, you know, emulating the same idea of InDesign by Adobe. And uh, it's really great. So there's a, tons of resources. So we'll be continuing posting some of these resources and going from there. Um, so that's, that's the software itself. And let me just switch over. When launching the software, you get a screen like this. So right now it's Affinity Publisher. Uh, version 1.8.6. We have a video. You can go if you go to our uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel. We have a video that uh, explores um, what it is required to install the um, the software itself. So that's uh, available to uh, to watch. And all the software is really straightforward to to install. So super easy. Again, Mac and Windows. You install the software, and then once you when you open it, you get this uh, this opening page like so. That uh, and uh, what happens from here is I can then create a new document. So I'm just going to click on new document, and then what it uh, does is it asks me what kind of uh, specs I want. So there's all the different press ready um, concepts here. So I'm just going to look at kind of press things. There's photo, web, print. Um, so what does it mean as we're talking about desktop publishing? So for example, if I'm going to take a um, A4 uh, size dimensions and I'll say, hey, I want five pages. So then as you can see here, I have five A4 and I'll just hit create. There we go. Okay, so it's created the pages and what it does is you can see it has page one, then it has page two, page three, four and five and these are done as like the double pages so you have like your left and right so it's all print ready so that's the nice thing is that this kind of desktop publishing software uh it already gets it makes it ready for printing so you don't have to think about you know how do i lay it out so page one's the front then you got page two three four five and it's and, and then this kind of a file um, as we go through the process can be sent out for printing and and publishing so what we do then is we have page one and just some of the tools quickly, we have a text uh, tool so we can put a text box. So I'll just put like a little text box here and, and Jeff will talk a little bit more about that as we, as we go through this. So here's a text uh, box and um, I'm just gonna put some filler text and this gives us an idea of the layout. So we can create a bunch of different text boxes and um, you know, where do we put them? How do we put them? That's the fun part that Jeff's gonna talk about is how, why do we put them where and why should we put them in certain spots and what, what are the best practices for this kind of layout? Uh, and then from there, I can take a, a picture. Um, so I can, you know, import pictures and place them as well. So then we got text, pictures, and it just goes from there. And then, you know, changing backgrounds, colors, uh, different fonts and, and so on. So uh, at the same time, so then, you know, I can double click and then I'm all of a sudden I'm on page two, page three, double click. I'm on page four and page five. And really that's, that's like the, the main intro. I just wanted to show uh, how simple it is to use, very intuitive text boxes, photo boxes. The, the great thing is then those boxes can move, uh, they can link to next pages and go, for, go you know, on and on. So it's a really intuitive, great piece of software. We'll have a video that explores what Jeff talks about today in design and layout, and then you guys can uh, you know, access that through our YouTube channel to uh, further look at that. So yeah, so that's that's a quick overview of what the software is like. Really great interface. I've, you know, really impressed with uh, just uh, looking at it so far um, as we go. Um, so let's, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to to uh, to Jeff right now and uh, he's gonna uh, take it from here. So here we go, Jeff, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Tom, and welcome, everyone. Uh, it's really good to be with you again, uh, doing some more uh, some more lessons here, this time on layout uh, for desktop publishing and basic layout. So this will be a, really a primer 
on um, on how to do a, a layout for a book or a publication of some kind. It could be for uh, it could be for a, a portfolio piece for yourself uh, in some way. That's uh, very something very um, simple uh, that that you can basically sink your teeth into, and it's it's really something that um, I. I had an interest in art early on, and and I never really had formal instructions for what I did, but it, it always did help to to look at at uh, other people's work and see what they did that I liked. So I, that's something I would um, suggest is if you have something in your mind, uh, a, a form of publishing that you like or a, or a style um, of layout that you like, uh, maybe pursue that in what you're doing. I just have a few very, um, well, not a, quite, a, quite a few actually, very basic um, things that we start with. Uh, first of all, the, the thing you start with is with the blank page. And uh, with a book, let, I'm just gonna do a little uh, drawing here on my tablet of a, of a book. And it, the cover is, um, is a left-hand page. Let's, get, let's give some black ink here. So you've got your cover and the spine is on the, I guess on the right, uh, the right, uh, left side. But it's a, uh, sorry, uh, the cover is a right-hand page. So here's your cover, and uh, so uh, you have to start with a, a cover, and that you really should try to do something fairly attractive. So it, uh, the title is usually your your focal point. So we'll start with a uh, with a title. It'll be. Um, Bob's fish, and uh, so it. The title is, should be the should be something that really stands out. It doesn't have to be the focal image, but it should should be something that stands out. And then we're going to have maybe uh, an image of a fish here to show us basically what uh, what it it should look like. So um, there you go. You've got a, a cover, and then I, I probably should say by. Jeff Wilson, and uh, you might, if you're thought ahead and got an ISBN number, but if you may not have to, that's a library uh, um, number um, for uh, to to have it numer numeral uh, numerally searchable in the library system. So ISBN number, you might want to put that on there, and then you've got a rear spine, and and then of course you open it uh, the other way. So we'll we'll just take that here and we'll. Just have another do another schematic of a of a book opening here. So you have the uh, the right and left hand pages. So your um, your left hand pages will be all even numbered pages. So that's two, four, six, eight, etc. Your um, right hand pages will be all odd numbered. So one, three, five, seven, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when you open your front, your cover of your book, you'll um, have your left page, which could be uh, page one, but actually uh, your page one is on the right side. So you, uh, you would go that way. Uh, and so that gives you a bit of an idea of how the, how the book goes. And of course your back cover would be, um, would be the opposite of your front cover. Let's, let's go back here again. And your back cover would be a, okay, let's go back here, create a new layer. And your back cover would be on the opposite side here. So you've got, your spine is on the right side here now, and your back page would be an even, even page. So it would be page maybe 128 because it's uh, on on the left side. So that's your back cover. So that gives you a bit, a bit of a basic uh, idea of how to do the book. And these are, um, you know, these are things probably people won't tell you <laughs> about, but uh, it's good to, it's good to kind of have a basic knowledge of that before you start. So um, the layout, of course, just like uh, some of you may have been uh, watching some of my cartooning classes, the the blank page is always the first challenge. Now you've got it in your mind what what you want to do for a book, and you probably have all your photos or your illustrations or your basic elements ready to go, and all your text is in a in a text file somewhere ready to drop in. And uh, so what you need to do is to um, is to put it on the page. Uh, 
So the, the first of all, what you need to know is that um, the basics of reading, we read left to right. Our eyes tend to go clockwise as we're reading left to right. So it would go left to right, then right top to right bottom, right bottom to left bottom, and then back up to left top. So that's that's uh, gives you an idea of what what your eye should see. Now, if you're in a book, you actually could have two pages, and you can use those two pages and use that concept for both the pages. So, for example, I'm just going to do um, a little sketch of a book here. Let's uh, create a new layer here. So we've got um, our wider book. Let's, let's say it's... Um, it's a landscape format book. So what you can do in your layout is you can have a picture of something here at the top corner, which catches your eye. It, it sort of gives uh, focus to where your eye starts to look. And it could be one of Bob's fish here. Let's uh, create that, go with that theme a bit more. And um, it could have some, some text going here. We'll just we'll just kind of ghost in uh, what it, what the text might look like, and there might be a might be a background illustration here somewhere, and then you might have some some more text here. So we'll we'll take a look at how this um, works in our to our eyes, because this illustration starts here at the top left, that will kind of give us a um, direction as we go through the the page. Now we would have. Or I would go here. It might go back down to the center illustration, and then go back down here. So just give, to give you an idea the flow of the the reader, how they would look at the page. So this might be um, in that, another illustration. This could be uh, Bob's fish's underworld. Uh, so it could be like a water scene or something like that, and could be part of the story. And uh, it would could go across the two pages. Or the other thing you could do is just to have it go through a single page here and uh, have it have that layout go each page separate. So this uh, Bob's fish could actually, you could have your little illustration in the center here on this page here. I'm just doing a layout basically to a little mock-up of what it would look like and then the rest of the text here and then you may decide to just start something entirely different over here and um, now because you have the the main image over on the left side on page um, on the first page which would be actually page uh, an even sided page would actually be page two then you would um, have a uh, have to have something that would offset it. And what I would suggest is having something similar here, maybe uh, more text here, maybe Bob's fish moving this way on the page. So that, and then and then maybe something totally different. You might want to have a an illustration here, or you might want to have some more text here. So the way the 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 eye goes here is it's going here across here then up this way and down and it's you've got a, a good flow for your text and whatnot um, and that's that's if you're do, doing it on two pages but as I say if you've got a book you've got the luxury of being able to make your make your image flow across two pages here we're going to uh, I'm just going to try something else here. Uh, maybe add some some actual text here too, and then just show you what I what I mean by that. Let's get a add some text here. Okay, and let's find a font here, and it's really fun. This is the fun part: is finding the right font that will work with your with your uh, artwork here. And uh, let's try a nice light one, and let's reduce the font size. And uh, see that I'm just doing this. This is almost basically text uh, desktop publishing right here on <laughs> in the uh, the Affinity Procreate here, Procreate software, which is uh, pretty amazing. So, um, so what you can do is is draw your text into um, this. But I think I'm, for this purposes, I'm just going to put uh, a little bit of text here. 
Oops. Okay, Bob's fish. They like the water. Oops. Okay, let's just try this little story here and see if we can create something here. So we have have a, anyway, we could put this at the bottom and put a really nice illustration here. I'm just going to kind of do a mock-up here of, um, of a fish scene with, uh, with Bob's fish here. Okay, we're going to create a new layer, of course, and uh, we'll start with a, Do a little cartoon fish here. And so you've got an interesting layout here because you've got uh, your illustration, which is mainly taking up the page and a lot, a fair bit of white space here, which is, I would always suggest if you, um, if you have a lot of white space, it's a little night, makes it a little nicer to look at. Um, if when you're doing angular and edging and stuff, that's nice for, um, Thanks for more serious documents. But if you're doing a fun kid's story like uh, like this could be, uh, you want to have a fair bit of white space. You want to have the text nice to look at, easy to read, um, you know, a good size. Um, you you've, These are all things that you uh, need to, to decide before you move on. But, um, yeah, if this is a format that you like, you um, this would stand out for you. Now, if you're... For example, your, um, let's take that illustration out now. Let's say you're writing a, a, a serious, like a news a newspaper or something along that line. You'd probably want to have a little more serious looking, just kind of show you the layout of how it would look. I'll, I'll do the, um, let's say I'll do the news photo or what would, would be the news photo here in, um, in a blue. We could have um, the fish here. Another fish here. And then we could have the little story about Bob's fish here. I'll just do it in red here. I'll just hand write it here, Bob's fish. When he collided with a sturgeon no charges pending Anyway, it would be in the text box, of course, but uh, you can see it's a little more angular, a little more serious looking. Uh, of course, the, the image is a little silly, but, um, you know, if you're doing a, a humor. So that's, uh, that's a couple of different ways of, of doing layout. Now, um, some of the things that we should consider, too, is the... Um, Uh, 
let's see, we've got our book here uh, and we're, we've got our, um, our spread, our two page spread here. And now when you're publishing, you need to remember that um, the book here is, is what is visible, but not, not every publisher or not every printer is able to have things bleeding right up to the edge of the page. You need to realize there is a gutter or a border. And I'm just going to, uh, if in fact, when, when I started publishing my books on um, Amazon, um, I had to realize there was a, a gutter and I've actually, it's something that I've had to deal with my whole career in, in, in publishing. But so what they will do is um, they will have a preset to where their gutter is or their, where their, um, their, their print edge will be. And it'll usually be, I'd say, usually not more than at the very most a half inch uh, inside from the page. But I think you can probably do this, the settings on um, on the Affinity uh, Publisher. I know you can on InDesign, which is a program I've been using lately. And uh, so you might not be able to do the thing we showed you earlier with the, right across the page, but I think with a lot of the printing um, platforms, you could do that. So it depends on who your publisher will be, who, who you'll go with and, and what their um, capabilities are. But you need to remember that there may be a, like a gutter here that, that you will have to keep your image in. So if you have, um, let's say if you have, we, we had the fish earlier here in the top corner, you'll, you'll note here that, um, this is outside the gutter. So you need to make sure you uh, keep anything you're doing within within this line here. Let's just zoom in a bit on here. So anything you're putting in here, you need to keep it within that space. etc. cetera. And uh, you can get to the edge there, but you can't go outside of it or it'll cut it off basically. So um, so if you're, you're having a, a story about a fish, and you might want to have, um, I don't know, a different type of fish, a little angel fish or something here. And, and some text, blah, blah, blah. And here, and then text here. And you can do a text box that would fit there. Just, just build it the way you think you should. And uh, of course, you can import your images and uh, import your text into those boxes. And um, now that's a nice little layout because you've got uh, something in the top right corner and top something in the bottom left corner. So it kind of evens it out. It offsets one another and it, it actually is very pleasant to look at as opposed to, let's say if we did, um, we did something like this where we had um, the two the two fish here And we had all the text here. It, um, well, it would look good if we had a little bit of white space on the bottom, something like that. But if it goes right down to the bottom, it kind of clutters the page. It gives it a, gives it a really full feeling. So I would really recommend if you're doing something like this to maybe leave a bit of white space just to give it a bit of breathing room. And uh, you might even consider um, taking the second one, the one below the fish above, right out. So, um, white space is always a, a good thing to add to your um, to your image. And, and you know, it's it's something we designers are, tend to say, well, that looks kind of empty there. But um, sometimes uh, a little bit of white space just gives a little bit of breathing room and helps the design gives a little room uh, to work. And anytime you can give a design a little bit of breathing room, especially with books, and I'll show you some examples later of, of books I've done where, um, you know, where I've just basically crammed all this, the usable space. But um, anyway, it's uh, it's something to consider. If you have the luxury of doing that, that's uh, it's well worth doing it. And certainly these tenants are not, are not uh, necessarily right for every situation, but uh, hopefully it'll, it'll help you give you a, a basic idea. And, and sometimes just a, a very, basic layout here like this, like we might have 
just a very small drawing here and we might have our Bob's fish here by itself in the in the uh, in the drawing it might be just a very simple uh, layout there where it's just a simple sim simple image it can be very impactful to a story if you reach a certain point where um, it's like a, um, um, I guess you could call it a, um, a climax in the story if you have something like that and, and you have the audience wondering what's going to happen and you just have one page especially the page just before you turn uh, from a, an even page to the next uh, odd page or sorry the next uh, from an odd page to the next even page uh, where you're flipping a page and you can't see it in the, the image you're looking at it kind of builds up a bit of um, uh, anticipation and it can really be helpful uh, to your story so that's that's something to consider too is that um, you can leave some white space but you can also just take all of the text out and just have a very small image that uh, in the page and it can really build up anticipation in the reader so th those are some pretty good techniques for for storytelling um, let's see what else could i tell you about oh and when you've done your layout um, always always proofread your text obviously and make sure that you haven't had a, had a glitch in the uh, the way the text boxes have gone and that's this is getting more into more sophisticated but it is still basic because it's um you know it, you've got a basic uh, vision of what you want to do so these are things you need to follow up on uh later on so um so when you do the proofreading you you'll you're checking to make sure your your images are all in the right place your text is all on the right pages and and whatnot so um so that's you have the vision and you need to follow through with it at some point so uh so if you have a very clear vision that that should come pretty easily to you and uh yeah and finally uh the, it's pretty simple as tom was saying the to go to the next step and just hit publish and you've got a, a you can send it to a printer and have a printed product sent to you and i i know when i did my books on amazon i'm just going to um tell you a little bit about that uh, my amazon cartoon books were just basically Those days you can get the proofs back in within a few hours i think the my first one i had sent at 11 30 at night and i had a two authors copies on my doorstep the next morning <laughs> which was uh, pretty amazing so um, i don't know if it's that way with with the, the uh, pandemic right now but um it's it's almost that fast right now and there's a lot of publishers out there that can um that are very quick and and the, the equipment and the technology is really good now for for doing this and uh, right now i'm just going to show you uh, um, a couple of my books i hope that you can see them here on on my computer screen this was my first book that i had done um this would be in 1993 and of course desktop publishing was still very very much uh, cut and paste and uh blue and um very different time uh, this was my first book, and I oops, I'll just show you some of the some of the things I had done. I had done this little feature, like a little newspaper column by the the one character who wrote a newspaper column in the local newspaper. So um, that I added that as a nice little touch there. And basically, these were um, these were just basically putting the comic strips. Um, on the pages and, and publishing them. And then I had did have an opportunity to put a couple of things like uh, this page here, which is like a little, you know, a little thing I added uh, as, I, as I did it. Yeah, so this is very basic. It's just basically uh, you put the comic strips out evenly on the page. And I had, I think 60, 70 comic strips there and uh, in black and white, it was pretty cost effective to do it and i had actually printed these and uh stapled them and collated the fulfilling and and i still have a few of those copies left and i still get um i still get requests for those actually believe it or not um now this would be my my next 
publishing was by my daughter, Rebecca, who did this book, The uh, Tiny Voyageur. And uh, it uh, basically, it started with me um, creating, a, well, she had created the story. And I had gone ahead and just illustrated it and sent, sent her a copy of it for a gift. And this is a copy of it here, the tiny voyageur. And uh, you'll see throughout the book, the, let's see here, let's see if I can go to a page with a couple of illustrations on it here. This is the little girl that's part of the, the main part of the story, Marilyn. Then I did um, my own books, my own co comic books. I had the um, series called the flats for uh, the average farm which uh, I had a series of weekend scripts, or I guess they'd be called Sundays in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. comic uh, uh, world. And uh, so these were um, all Sunday format, weekend format uh, comic strips. And uh, even the cover was a, was a weekend format, colorized. And uh, that was printed by Amazon, by Amazon um, Create Space, which is now, I think, KDP, which is Kindle uh publishing and uh and it's still available on amazon now if, if, if anybody wants to check it out it's a very easy platform using the the amazon space and i'm sure it would combine well with your um with your affinity publisher and then the flats farm was done very similarly i'd already done the average farm book and i'd actually done a done a desktop publishing project with a friend of mine the strips themselves were we're basically daily comic strips and this was the the book comprised the entire series of flats farm strips i had done in um well the ones that were that were that i thought would be workable in that format and a little while later this would be about two years ago i worked with a lady named uh, tobias clark and on her book the uh she's a metis storyteller and she created a, a story about uh the the story of the Tamarack, which is um, a retold version of um, a First Nations uh, story of the Tamarack, which is a, a tree that's very prolific in the area we live in. The Tamaracks are all over the place here and where I live here in Gray County. And um, uh, Tobias had a very wonderful story and it was very inspirational for me to, uh, to work with her. And uh, do the story about the, the this wonderful tree, the tamarack tree, and uh, here we, I created into a into a fun character, kind of a likable character. These uh, tamaracks were <laughs> were kind of rascals. They kind of gave the <laughs> they kind of gave people a hard time, uh, or gave the birds a hard time. That's what, that's how the story went. The, the birds uh, had. Um, were trying to land on them and they wouldn't let them they and then they were punished by the great spirit and here's uh, how the the young man finds them later and and helps them spread all over the world and uh, here's the young man discovering them and uh, and of course they're very friendly and they, they're kind of they're kind of uh, like oh we we know we did something bad but we'll be a friend <laughs> great story and uh, and I think the illustrations really would really fit it. And uh, and that's where I stand now with with my publishing. I do presently work at a weekly newspaper for the time being, as 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 long as it's still going. And uh, you know we're not planning to stop, but it, it is you know the time is times are changing. It's not going to be the uh, it's not going to be publishing. Uh, as, as it is now, uh, it'll probably change to something different to keep going. But uh, so that's interesting. It's been a, an exciting experience. And, and I, I learned something new every day doing that. And uh, just doing cartooning and, and learning with the software uh, that Tom has introduced me to and that I've been sharing with you here with my illustration. And uh, that's always exciting. So, um, so as a finishing note, I would say just uh, keep experimenting. Uh, take the basic, the basics, and uh, and realize that anything I might say 
uh, might be wrong and you might come up with something even better. And I hope you do because it's, um, it's, that's what it's all about, finding what's good for you. You're, you're a different artist than I am or you're a different creator than I am. And uh, um, if you find something that works better for you than, than what works for me, I all the best to you. But I, I can help at least and, and give you some basics uh, that help me. So I hope uh, that helped a lot. Uh, it certainly was fun to be here with you. And uh, I think I've pretty much covered everything I thought I would cover here. And uh, I'd just like to turn it over to Tom, if, if, you're, if I may. We can take a few minutes for some Q&A. Um, and also um, what Jeff spoke about, what we'll do is, uh, um, you know, look at how that, you know, uh, text boxes and different layouts can work in Publisher and put a few uh, demos together of that in, a, in the process of, you know, the text boxes and so on. Um, I saw one question and I think that's a great one. Uh, and I just, I, I had already answered it, but um, since, you know, Jeff was using Procreate and I mentioned that it's a great, you know, I think it, the, what, what I really got and I thought was a great uh, idea here is that drafting out the layout um, is great because, you know, like if you can sketch it out and go, okay, this is what I'm going to do then you have a real good template before you get into the nitty gritty of, you know, and publisher and putting everything in. And then another question that came up was uh, asking if, if, if you draw stuff in something like Procreate, can you then import into publisher? And yes, so you can definitely place any images in it from any kind of software. So, you know, like JPEGs or TIFFs or PNGs, you can then place those images in there. So definitely like, so if, you know, Jeff's drawing the fish, and then you wanted to put those fish illustrations in your uh, document, in your book for publishing, then you can just place those images. So it's, yeah, definitely a great way to do that. So, um, yeah, so that's, I think the, the key is that you can, uh, you know, incorporate multiple sources. Uh, you might have, uh, uh, I talked to Jeff about this before we started, but you might have uh, different, um, uh, you know, you might have drawings, illustrations that you have uh, completed and you want to compile a book with your drawings or illustrations or paintings or, uh, you know, combination, maybe you have some poetry that you want to put to images, right? So anything's possible. And I think, uh, I think Jeff already, you know, I think that was great because Jeff talked about that too, is how, um, you know, you can, uh, it's not just about a book, right? We're talking about, these can be illustrated books, uh, you know, story books. It could be uh, like artist portfolio books, poetry books. Um, photography books, right? So if you're a photographer and you want to put, make like a photo book with all your photography, with some image, like words about what, where it is and so on, all of this is, is great. So there's, there's really, uh, uh, you know, kind of endless amounts of ways to publish, right? So we're, we're not just talking about, you know, a, 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 you know, literature, like a, a fiction book, right? We're looking at how, to, how do we uh, you know, we can bring art into this as well, like uh, as, as uh, you know, that kind of idea. So, um, yeah, so just I had a question here. Someone was asking about the first section. Can I view it later? Yeah, so you'll be able to watch it again. Uh, there was a, we did a technical restart. So I'm not sure if it gives us the whole thing, but we're going to try to reload everything in Crowdcast. If it doesn't exist, we'll put a link in the Crowdcast link so that uh, you can then go to the YouTube upload to watch part one. So either way, we'll have it covered to make sure um, you're good to go with uh, with that. So um, yeah, so uh, speaking about uh, question, we'll be speaking about InDesign. Yeah, so what we're going to do is um, we talked about, we're, we're using uh, Affinity Publisher, which is the same thing as InDesign. And uh, so we'll, we'll do some intros. Um, I'm going to look at, I'm going to show some of that these elements of the layout next in beginning of part two, um, but also we'll be posting a video that goes over how to apply this, these concepts in publisher. So uh, that will be happening as well. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not seeing too many other questions, Jeff. So um, yeah, so I'll just send it back to you so you can uh, do a, a sign off and here's back to Jeff. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. And thanks everyone. Um, yeah, it was, um, it was uh, something that um, to to hear that uh, that question about what you can do with it. I mean, it's so much many more so many more applications now than there were back in the day, and it's so much easier to do this. I I 
I go back to a day when it was cut and paste and shooting negatives. And um, it was a, a so much different process. You have in front of you the software or even within design. Um, it has changed uh, publishing altogether. And something that, that you, you know, I, I remember doing comic strips and, and figuring out how am I going to get this duplicated so that it'll I can get somebody to see this to publish in their newspaper and it's gone from that to being I can send it in an email or I can send a digital image to someone and and it's very it's possible to within seconds of creating your artwork to be on the published page uh it's it's that simple now and it, it's so much easier than it was in the day the technology has uh has really just taken the publishing industry and made it a, a so much more accessible uh Thing. So um, my suggestion is to in, enjoy that, uh, take advantage of that and to um, get started on something like this. It's, it's cheaper than ever before. You can, you know, something that would have cost you several hundred thousand dollars to do is now something you can get for $70 with the, uh, the, the software for the Affinity Publisher. And um, uh, that's that's pretty exciting. I, I'm happy for you and very excited for you. And I um, I wish you all the best as you uh, explore that. And, and uh, thank you again for having me and and all the best. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. So yeah, I want to uh, tell everybody that. Uh, so we'll be we'll continue the um, the process of uh, of uh, going through parts two, three, four, and we'll have these. Uh, side-by-side -side videos. So we'll be looking at the software itself, publisher, adding uh, more uh, concepts um, and, uh, you know, going from there. And by the end, we're also going to have info on how to get it all print ready. So, you know, how the software will, whatever you've designed so that you can actually then uh, export it and to a printer. So what does it mean to get print ready? So we're going to have, it's going to be kind of a, 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 you know, loads of information. So there'll be a lot of supplementary info as we go with this as well. So it's a really, really exciting journey. It's hard to pack it all into just like four sessions, uh, but uh, we will do that the, the best we can. And again, uh, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Stratt. I'm the lead digital artist. Uh, thanks to, uh, to Jeff for, uh, um, uh, you know, taking this, uh, this challenge on to, to explore uh, desktop publishing and the theories and concepts. And I think, um, yeah, really great to uh, start to think about um, the, the, you know, how the human mind works and really designing for that. And I think that's a great uh, takeaway of, uh, for design principles is, you know, working with that and uh, how our eyes work and vision works to, to make, um, you know, the, the, design work right and uh that's i think really good in the in the fluidity okay so um yeah i want to want to thank all of our uh, our partners in this uh project so we have the canada council for the arts we have our library partners blue mountains public library collingwood public library wasaga beach public library and uh want to remind everyone that uh, the software affinity publisher is available uh, on the digital arts computer workstations and uh, these are uh, slowly being expanded to all the libraries and will be available. So you can always uh, access it there as well. So until next week, uh, or sorry, two weeks from now, we'll be going to part two. And uh, please go to uh, events.tbmcs.ca. I have that earlier in the notes. Uh, you can register for the next uh, upcoming part. So we hope to see you then. Take care and have a great rest of the day.